I be talking up since I got lots of those in life. I could get you started, but I can't teach you to drive. I turn on my mind, it doesn't swear I come alive. Cash is always liquid, always dripping. I got All right, ladies and gentlemen, got your watch list coming in August 27, 2019. And today was wild, and tomorrow and the rest of this week is going to be even crazier. And if it's not, we know exactly what to look for after that. So you could call me dramatic, but I do think that something really, really big happened in the market today, and I do not think it's getting as much attention, or it's kind of just not being digested as I would have expected. So maybe that's why I'm being dramatic about it, but I think it is huge. It has to do with the trade war. It has to do with the Chinese currency as well as some other currencies but what we had happen today what the developments whether Trump was lying or not the trade war and everything this has been absolutely nuts so I'm gonna go over that I'm gonna cover the keys for tomorrow I'm gonna go over the plays we made today I made about four different plays so this is one of those times you guys want to pay attention they do fall in line with the keys that I have and essentially you know if we don't see a drawdown in this next coming week or two, then we're probably going to see it at the next big news catalyst date coming around the Fed. So I'm going over those plays that I already made today, and those plays actually will cover it. Some are weeklies, but most of those, the plays, and even what I'm looking for from here on out are covering a one-month time scram. So let's get right into it. Drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you guys are subscribed. We post this nightly watch list every single night. And best of all, we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. It is the first link in the description. So we will see you there tomorrow morning at pre-market and now the most important thing you need to do post your watch list below we're going to cover those pre-markets we had to run through them earlier here today but it is always good to source that info so let's get into it here are your keys coming into tomorrow watch the currency so the big thing i'm thinking that happened today there was two things it had to do with the japanese yen and the chinese yuan our good friend Juan. so right off the bat i will tell you this even though it is uh, i think one the thing Thing that the market really hasn't responded to is the yuan. The, again, I showed this yesterday on the watch list. It gapped up. The, the fact that it really it came down here, and this was important today because as that news came out that China wanted to talk and do a deal, it strengthened. But then as the markets opened and we went through the day, it kind of went back up. And, and again, I said if we kind of rebound here back to that level before that drop, that's not good. So the fact that it held up around 717, this is absolutely insane. So this is one of two things that I think is crazy. The other one is the is the yen but the fact that it's up so high again anytime we've seen the market in, in China do this with their currency it has always led to a negative effect in some way shape or form but I think it's going to take time for one the market to digest this and then two I, I don't know I don't know what number two would be it just, I, it just absolutely not a good thing especially if this changes these changes are happening as fast as they are so Watch for the Chinese currency, and again, I, I would give it honestly about two weeks uh, if, if it does stay around here and keep weakening or a week or two. Again, just like the first time when we broke over seven and that happened, if it continues to go up day after day, that is just going to the velocity and how long it stays above there is going to be important. And, and again, we have a bunch of indicators like this, like the yield curve, which was which was further inverted today. So keep your eye out for that. But then the next one is the, the Japanese yen, and it was kind of similar it, you can see here, this is a one minute. It gapped down again. It was at 105.38. Before that, it actually it was at 106. Then it went to 105, then gapped down. But now it came back up. But the thing about the United States dollar versus the Japanese yen, it's a lot more stable. So if you guys even look here, the last time it's really broke below 105, there was March 2018, which was right uh, after the February 2018. Here's even December, October, November. The, the yen didn't drop as much as it did. You could even see Brexit. The Japanese fell below and it dropped, but that's pretty much it. You know, the August flash crash, it was, it was very, very strong and then came up, but the Japanese yen is, is stable. This is the last four years. It really doesn't move in a crazy range like even the yuan or, or anything else has. So even the dollar is a lot less stabler than the than the Japanese yen so this is the key I'm going to be looking for is watching the interaction between again China and then this but if this does drop below 105 it's going to be huge but in, in all honesty I think that the market is not understanding the scope of this and I think that it's kind of normal this is what we've seen before in the past with China and this and that and really what I think is going on right now 
we've seen it weaken so many times now. You know, here's just even from 2018, we saw it weaken again in, in huge, massive rates uh, all throughout the last, you know, 12 months from today. And I think the market has kind of got used to this, but I think it gets to a point where once you start re breaching some of these higher bounds and it does it really, really fast, this is huge. So I think it's very easy for the market to overlook this and for investors to overlook this but I, I think this is huge that's why i said it's kind of that gray swan where we've already seen it happen before but it's going to kind of reemerge, and it, it's right there right in front of everybody but i don't think a lot of people are giving it the same attention or it's getting the same attention that it really deserves so i'm going to be watching out for that and we did explain you know with some of the plays we made today it is harder to play off of that uh especially you know minute by minute just because it takes time for any of these effects to come through so we'll, we'll see what happens from there but keep your for that if anything and then really with what i'm saying with both of these currencies and everything and and again how the market's moving this shocked a lot of people whether you thought the move was real or fake you know we had this big move on friday then all of that bad news over overnight and then just for it to do nothing you look at the daily chart on the spy it looks horrendous absolutely horrendous honestly uh it, it looked a lot worse you know coming from here but this kind of levels it out it keeps us in the range pretty much if we don't see any more downside this week or even coming into next week you, you can't underestimate the market uh, in its resiliency especially at this level but if it doesn't occur this week or next week then I think it's going to happen after the rate meeting or the, or the rate cuts that we'll see and depending on where the yield curve that's going to have even bigger implications but that is coming right around the corner around September 18th and 19th so we're wrapping up August over here that's about three weeks away so that's why I'm saying if it doesn't happen here it could push into there or if we do start to see a move coming into the rate cuts the rate cuts might be the the bellwether or something not even the, the rate cuts might act as kind of a impetus to either stop or the market might just wait in this range until they get it and this is even what we saw with October I think it was actually after November October October had the volatility in 2018 then November and then they waited till December rate meeting it didn't give them what they wanted and then that's when the market started to pretty much capitulate we are pretty much setting up for the exact same thing around here so if we don't see downside caused by these news events right here right now uh, wait and everything again push it all the way to that fed meeting so again this is what's highlighting some of the plays that we've already made today but all in all the last two weeks were practice uh, we got a nice practice run we learned to and this is another key that we learned that the bigger moves came with more conviction so watch the volume and key levels we've been trading in you know especially if we have to break below 285.50 or 284 to see anything lower and then anything above 289 290 to get us anything on the higher end and then that final test at 294 but again the key here is going to be volume and the thing i didn't like about today was that friday was such a big volume day again pretty much that second largest all year and then today was pretty weak uh comparatively it's very rare that we've seen these big drop days and these big volume days followed up by 50 percent less volume the from the day before so this was very very weird it did avoid the down friday down monday but keep your eyes out for that but those are your keys so let us get into the plays right off the bat the plays that i made so i did a fedex i did grab october uh 110 puts which are about uh, i want to say these are about like two and a half uh standard deviations or three standard deviations away they're super far i got 10 of the 110s i spent like 300 bucks but the part about this play i'll show you here so really what i'm hoping with these 110 i got these at 33 cents each they did end up going up a little bit despite all of these these moves they have a large spread and fedex again at these levels i think it's just i liked it on the call side but at the in the same respect too if it does start to give up here and again Trump did call out FedEx and UPS by name. They, they they could actually really have a lot of downside here. That's a one-year chart, and you could kind of see, compare literal last December and October there. It's kind of nutty to take a look at, at what happened with them, but they could drop big, especially if they start breaking some of these key support levels. You know, if they really start to drop and go below here, they, they could really, really capitulate, and we've seen them do that. But my plan is why I spent so much money on these. Uh, it's very not typical of me to spend 300 bucks on these on just random contracts like that because I bought 10 of these and my plan is to bank a spread out of these and I bought these 10 now. I'm going to wait hopefully it, after this week or two weeks, but that's why, again, I made sure I had time even after the Fed meeting if it causes any volatility and the plan would be to sell some of these 100s to lower the cost basis or even the 105s because even if I sold the 105s at 20 bucks I would be pretty much paying like $13 a contract I would spend 130 which isn't too bad but that's something I'm going to look into doing on there so that's the first play the next play I made I did make a spread I was going to do this with Apple too but it would have been a little bit more expensive right off the bat 
And again, I knew I was going to want to make two plays. So what I did is I, I lowered it. But I'm going after Apple too because I think if the, again, I'm going to start building, even though I already have a bigger Apple premium sell, I may start building a big position around Apple or I might give, depending on how FedEx trades, I'm going to look for them too. But at the same time, I think Apple is just, I think they have a target on their back. You know, there's Huawei for China and I think there's Apple for the US. So I, I have that and what I grabbed there too, again, October, and this is what I'm saying with the plays, I'm getting plays that are at least gonna cover the Fed meeting and give me some more time in there. And if again, you wanna be ultra, ultra safe, you go to November, cause that will also cover Brexit as well too. So again, you could put the same $300, $100, whatever it may be, and it could cover all of these events. And that's what you wanna keep your mind up for, especially now if you want to be able to utilize spreads or you're aware of that and we made that video this week but that is what i'm going to keep my eye out for and that's even what we said too you know if we're even expecting a move you know this week or next week could potentially bring a move but then the next guaranteed is going to be the rate cuts this is the difference this is why we're going to be balancing between the weeklies and then the multiple months because if you go for the weeklies if you could hit it on the head with the timing and a shorter move comes you're going to spend a little bit amount of money and you're going to be able to make a lot more getting closer to the money or you could spend the same amount with some time, but you're going to make less if a bigger move happens in the short term. But then if the big move does happen in the longer term and you have time and it's a really big move, just like those TLTs, you'll be able to benefit off them. But the play we got on Apple, I got 10 of the 160s and I sold 10 of the 150s. It's about a 35 cent net debit. So again, another 350 for those. Those we could, I could turn it into another butterfly or do something there, but I am going to look again as the situation gets more clarity. I'm going to look to create one of those naked leg butterflies or excuse me, spreads as I just did on FedEx. So keep your eye out for that. But we got those and the other plays we made now on the weekly side, I got one for next week and then one for this week. I got a Microsoft on August this week. We got a 127 for 37 cents and then a Walmart for next week, a 106 at 20 at for 27 cents. So I like Walmart, and again, I think we have them both up here. I think Walmart's going to be great, too, if it does start to give up. But again, key is if it does start to give up with everything else. But I like those. Same thing with Microsoft. I'm going after bigger Dow components and stuff that pay dividends because, again, this was the theory and what we've been saying the other day. If those start to give up, that is going to kind of confirm a risk-off environment. But as you see here, they, they held up very, very well, again, with the overall market. So we'll see what happens. But I got those two plays. And then lastly, we did a Boeing spread. And I like Boeing, too. And my theory on Boeing was that Pretty much it's had seven, eight days. It usually does this. Uh, it's done this many, many times where especially especially when it's been after all of this drama been hitting its low. Even prior to that, we've seen this many, many times here again. A lot of this stuff is looking like December. You're seeing this straight down, but it's doing seven, eight days of just arbitrarily just running up regardless of what the market's thrown out out of it and it starts to come down so the play we made was a september 20th i accidentally got filled on two of them i only meant to do one but i think it was a 315 or 312 to 305 uh put spread and we spent about $40 for September 20th. So those are the ones I got there. And all of these plays, again, we, these are the ones we played. The one I want to play now is Baidu and Yang. And Yang is a Chinese uh, inverse. I really, really like those. Uh, again, you could probably do some crazy spreads on them just because the volatility is so high and they're all over the place. So I really like that. And then there's Baidu. And then I like Baidu a lot. We were saying even with, with uh, Baba, if we start to see those kind of come down, I'm going to like those a, a lot more. So those are the plays we played. These are what I'm going to be even looking at tomorrow. Tomorrow now, Johnson & Johnson, I'm sure this is going to surprise the shit out of a lot of you guys. They went up. The Oklahoma judge ruled that they had a part in the opioid crisis, that they fined them $527 million, and the stock went up, and this is what we were talking about. Remember, we said earlier today it was pricing in a small move, and they got fined, but it wasn't as bad as people were expecting. That's why it went up. So I'm going to watch for this to either continue tomorrow or give up and then watch a real reaction come in and play here. So I like Johnson & Johnson. I am going to be watching Facebook. It barely closed above 180. So again, if it does, if it kept closing below 180, I was going to keep my eye out for it. But again, if we do start to see risk off start to approach, I am going to start looking to Facebook. I just have some contracts that are up and the contracts for September are still a little expensive, about 50%. So I'm going to wait till those come down, but still like Facebook, even on the bounce side as well, too. This is a good one, too, as well for both sides. This is that 300 level Netflix. So if they come down from here, they could be good. Or again, last time it's hit 300. Uh, again, it puts it right in that prime zone to go straight to 330. So I'm going to watch there. I think the range has set a little bit lower, but I'm going to watch Netflix. The contracts sadly are a little bit more expensive in the sense there's a lot of IV, but I, I keep my eye on Netflix. I like that UVXY, like we talked about the previous 
premiums. You got you saw it got killed today, and some people were just until that last pop there at the final minutes of close. You saw. Uh, the prices stay up on the on the VIX, so keep an eye out for this. You could even still see how it's green. It, it's just overall weird moves on the market, but I still like it. And then lastly, UNH and Anthem, they're still kind of descending, and even in the midst of all this, although there was that little after hours pop or whatever, it's pretty clear these guys are still showing this weakness, and they're kind of doing their own thing. So despite even the market coming up, they really don't care. I don't know what all of these fat fingers are and all of that, but it's kind of it's not hard to tell. Both Anthem and UNH are just doing their own thing and just slowly depleting and there's there's a hole in the bottom of the bucket it looks like so little by little I, I can't wait to see what happens with that but we still have all those spreads uh covering about till september hopefully october if not i will add uh till get some to october and then lastly tlt baby so keep your eyes out for this and again we were talking a lot about september and and what's going to happen with the rates the curve is inverted and you'll notice now that the curve is inverted it's not moving as much and that's what you have to watch out for is is to see but again the shorter term con contracts i like those a lot more when it's coming into this but it's going to be about timing so we'll watch the bond market now although the bond market's making unusual moves in the sense of the yield curve inversion it's not moving as big as it was the last few weeks so again it's having this cool off let it cool off for a little bit and then let's kind of see but once the bond moves start getting a little crazy that's going to be our time to strike on tlt and then lastly shopify roku and beyond beyond not as important again we brought these up but why do i keep bringing these up because these are the contracts we sold out of so i'll start with roku and this is what i'm saying is that if they start to go up tomorrow they could be a lot cheaper if they do have a dip but even now we got the we got these 155s remember we sold out of this but we got these around 40 49 cents they hit a dollar today now they're back down but now they're still holding an expensive price there's also the shopify's we sold these 435s for about uh, 69 cents on the week but again they all hit today they kind of gave back a little bit so you're kind of seeing the ones further out the money come down these surprisingly held their premiums and again they really moved despite what the market did in general and kind of the reaction so that the fact that they're still doing this we now have kind of a backdrop for how the premiums moved i'm very very interested in this and i'm gonna keep my eyes on those so that is your watch list ladies and gentlemen make sure you post your watch list make sure you're ready to go make sure you're positive respectful hydrated get ready to there be in the morning click on the first link in the description make sure you subscribe let's go